policy. Jesus. More like 39 years ago. 39 years ago. They said, they told my husband, said, you'll make it in ministry. With her? She ain't never going to make it. Well, 30, 38, 39 years later, I'm still here. And I'm still standing. And I'm still preaching. Because you didn't hire me. And you can't fire me. You cannot stop me. You cannot finish me. Because greater is he. Because if I would have believed that gentleman that said that to me, my life's journey would have ended up completely different. Because believing is the door of entry. I said believing is the door of entry. And if I would have believed it, then I would have conceived it. And if I would have conceived it, then I would have received it. And it would have brought forth fruit in my life. So what are you saying to us? I'm saying sometimes you got to hear it and ignore it. You ain't got to fight with it. You ain't got to wrestle with it. You don't have to try to prove anything. You just got to hear it, ignore it, and say, we shall see. You have to abort it out of your hearing. You have to abort it out of your vision. Every lying voice that has attached itself to the womb of your spirit, to the womb of your purpose, to the womb of your destiny, abort, abort every memory, abort every voice. Every voice that said you'll never be, you can't be, you won't have it. Every, every, every lying voice, push it out! Tell somebody, push it out! Somebody said, well, I messed up, Pastor Brady. That's all right, we all messed up. You might, you might look at me now and think, wow, your faith is strong. That's because I'm 39 years into the process. Hello. And can I tell you, leaders are not always born. Sometimes they're made. And it's the things that we go through that prepare us for what God wants to do in our lives. It enables you to look back over your life. Have you ever looked back over your life and said, Lord, I don't know how in the world, why in the world I ever had to go through that, let alone how in the world. Because there are some things that I'll look back over my life and say, Lord, have mercy. I would have never made it had it not been for you. to use your life. He lets you go through things. And most of the time, can I tell you, they're not even about you. They're about what God wants to do in your life. So in our text tonight, one of the world's greatest pastors, the world's greatest leaders of the Old Testament, he was a pretty mixed up person. I mean, I can't even believe that when God was looking for somebody that he would use to lead nations or lead multitudes or, or somebody to speak to kings or somebody to negotiate on behalf of his people's freedom. I can't believe that he would pick somebody like Moses. Here's why. Number one, he had a communication problem. And if you are going to plead with the Pharaoh on my behalf, I want you to be able to not get him mad, you know, before you start negotiating my case. He had, a, he had a stuttering problem. So that was one issue. He also was a man that lived a very conflicted life. He was brought up in a very turbulent manner. By all rights, he should have been a, dysfun a dysfunctional adult because he was, a, he was raised in a dysfunctional childhood. He was on the hit list of hell as a child. His mama was hiding him in a bull rush as a baby. Amen. So that means his identity was hidden. Right. That means his greatness was hidden. 
That means his destiny was hidden. That means his purpose was hidden. I mean, he, he wasn't only hidden, but he was also abandoned. He was placed in a bulrush and sat down the river with snakes and alligators and every other thing you could think of. So he wasn't only hidden, he wasn't only abandoned, but he was also adopted. Because he was uh, Egyptian by his situation, but he was Hebrew by birth. That creates a problem all in and of itself. Who does he worship? What God does he worship? What language does he use to speak? What culture should he lean into? What ceremony should he observe? He was messed up. He was a montage of things. And his name means to be drawn out. See, when greatness is inside of you, greatness has to be drawn out. And it often happens in many different ways. Some people have it drawn out by exposure. Whenever they see somebody else who has got greatness on the inside and they're moving in that greatness, the minute that they see it, they automatically say, yes, I, that's in me. I know that that's a part of my destiny. Then there are others who it takes challenges to bring and draw the greatness out of them. The Bible said that when the lion roared, that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. So sometimes the attack itself is what draws the greatness outside of you. See, sometimes you don't even realize that great, there's greatness in you until the lion roars, until all hell breaks loose in your house. You don't even think you have the power to really pray and touch God. But let the enemy come against your children. between the woman and the serpent. See, a man can pray and he would be like, Father God, in the name of Jesus. But you let a woman start praying, she will be like, tell you a lie. Get out of my house. Get out of my child. I'm right there in the world. So when the Pope who stuff like that, you are liar, you're the father of lies. The blood is against you. I plead the blood over the door pole. Between you and the devil, shake your sister's hand. 